Did you know that every time that you say, but it works on my computer, a sysadmin cries? What if you had a way to avoid this, something that it's easy to deploy and reuse? Container images could be the answer. But what exactly are container images? A container is a group of processes running isolated from the host system. A container image is a blueprint with all that's necessary to deploy and run containers. Wait a minute, it isn't that simple. Container images are not only a blueprint, but hold all the building materials almost assembled. We discussed a lot with our colleagues about what could be an easy to understand analogy, and one we liked was Lego boxes. They hold all the instructions and all the pieces, except that most of the construction is already done and you can reuse those constructions as base for other more complex ones. And you can somehow copy all the pieces. Anyway, hope you get the idea. Back to the regular flow. Container images pack all that's necessary for a container to run in an easy to distribute artifact. A container image has all the files a container needs to execute properly, and some metadata that describes what to run and any additional features requested to the container runtime, like environment variables or open ports. You can see an image as a snapshot of a minimal system containing only the files necessary to run an application, minus the kernel which comes from the host system, and it's shared among with all other containers. It's all contained in a compressed file that you can copy from one system to another, and it will work in the same way. Container images are distributed through container registry. Images inside the registry are identified by name and tag. The tags help identify the different builds of the images. With the simple instructions, like pull and push, the container tools can download or upload a container image from or to a registry, making it available to use or modify to others. What makes a container images easy to distribute is also their relatively small size, especially compared to virtual machines. This is due to two factors. They generally only ship the libraries and files necessary for the specific application to run, and they reuse the storage parts they have in common with other images. This is made possible because container images, like onions and ogres, have layers. Every change to files in a container images is not applied directly, but instead it's saved in a separate storage layer. This also means that all the layers that compose a container image are actually read-only. This makes it easy to reuse the common parts in multiple images without conflicts. So, let's see how container images are built. The most common and easy way to build a new container image is using a docker file or container file. Most container images are created starting from the base image and then adding additional files or modifying the existing ones. A base image starts literally from scratch. Let's look at the docker file for the hello world image from docker hub. As the most basic type of container image, in this container storage we will find only one file, the hello executable we have copied in the root file system. The metadata part of the image will simply say run the hello command. Let's inspect this image and try to make sense of this. We can see that the root file system is composed of only one layer. In the history section we see that there are in fact two layers, but one is empty. That is the layer that adds the metadata saying what command to run when executing the container. That is also why it's common to see many commands, like multiple package installs, chained in a docker file in one single run instruction. Chaining commands groups all changes in one single storage layer that can be shared with other similar images. Remember how we said the file system for container images is read-only? 
overlay file system mounts allow us to superimpose a file system to another file system, thus adding a layer which contains all the changes we want to see in the final image. That means that the final container image will have a collection of all the layers we have used in the build process. This is great for efficiency, since containers with identical base image will reuse the layers they have in common, saving storage space. And that's also why we need to be very careful when building images with secrets, since no file really gets deleted, but only masked in a new layer, any secret we add in a Docker image will always be accessible through a particular layer even if we remove it in later comments. Let's take as example the Docker file for the official Python Slim Buster image. While it is certainly more complex than the Hello World example, it is just more of the same. Instead of starting from scratch, it starts from a Debian Buster Slim base image. It then defines some necessary environment variables and then starts installing the Python runtime packages through four run commands. As you can see, most package installs are grouped together to reduce the number of layers in the final image. Let's inspect this container image. In this container image, we can see four additional layers in addition to the base one. These correspond to the run instructions we saw on the docker file used to install and configure the packages necessary to the pattern runtime. If we build a new container image using this one as a base, the new one will reuse those layers and add new ones without changes. In fact, let's just do that. I have a simple python hello world script that I want to execute in a container. My docker file will then use python slim buster as a base image and I will simply add my script and change the command, like this. Let's build the image. I will simply name it my image. If I go ahead and inspect my image, I will see one new storage layer compared to my base image. And in the history, I will see a new empty layer with the CMD definition. Now, if I wanted to publish my image on a public or private container registry, a simple push operation would send my image to the remote registry. Speaking of using base images, one best practice is to prefer using minimal images whenever possible. If you really can start from scratch, you should look at distroless images. These images are purpose-built to contain only the necessary libraries for each framework to run, and nothing else. Having less libraries, these images usually have way less vulnerabilities than full Linux distro images. Let's compare the latest official node image and the distroless node image, both based on Debian Buster. Here is the size comparison. And here are the vulnerability scan results. You can immediately see why it's better to use distroless as base images. These are some of the basics of container images. And by the way, you can inspect every image that's on public registries, even without pulling them in. In fact, our threat research team did just that and found some pretty interesting things about images in Docker Hub. Wanna know more? Take a look at the threat report. You'll find the link in the video description. And don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel. There's more great content coming. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.